Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub. Today's topic for discussion is uh, what are the probable reasons for the increased assay of oral solid dosage form during stability study. So the general trend uh, during stability study for any kind of product, especially for oral solid dosage form, as far as assay is concerned, you can say, okay, it must be at least no change, ideally if required or if there is no uh, degradation taking place or it must be in a decrease in the trend as there is a degradation going to take place over a stability. But could there be a chance, a possibility, a probability where the assay is not decreasing but it is in increasing trend during the stability study. So this is the topic that we are going to discuss today. So what are the probable reasons for the increased assay of OST during stability and I have just given one example for understanding of the audience. Let us say the initial assay is 100% and at third month assay is 102% at sixth month assay is 105% and at twelfth month assay is 108%. So this is the situation that we are going to discuss. Before we move on to the probable reasons. Let us now understand what are the influencing factors on to the drug stability and there could be two prominent factors one is environmental factors and second could second factor could be a product based factor. So what do, do I mean by environmental factors such as impact of temperature, impact of humidity, impact of light etc. The second factor is product related factors. What are they? They could be chemical and physical properties of the active substance. It could be the excipients used in the manufacturing. It could be the manufacturing process. It could be container closure system or packaging materials. So these are the likely influencing factor onto the drug stability. Let us now talk about the preparation of the sample. See this has a relevance with our uh, conclusion. So we have to understand how the samples can be made uh, during the assay. So two different techniques like crushing techniques and the dropping technique is very much known for the oral solid dosage form. What is the calculation formula that needs to be used in case if you use the crushing technique and here is the calculation formula. Okay. So the more important point in the calculation formula is going to be on the sample weight, average weight and the label claim. I will talk about the relevance of these three important terms in deciding on to the, 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 the probable reasons for increase in assay. And in case if someone used the dropping technique, then this is going to be the calculation formula. So what do you mean? I mean by crushing technique, if someone knows, doesn't know that, you are going to crush the tablet into a fine powder and then the equivalent weight of the API will be taken for further treatment of the sample preparation. So you need to have three important factors like average weight, label claim and the sample weight. But in case of dropping technique, you are not going to weigh the sample, you are not going to measure the crushed powder, you are just going to drop the decided number of units. And then you are going to further dilute it, further sonicate, treat it and then you are going to conduct the assay. So this is the, the brief information about the crushing technique and the dropping technique. So first let us understand what are not the reasons for the increased assay for oral solid dosage form during stability study. Many times people mistaken that oh the increase or decrease in water could be the reason for increase or decrease in the assay. So it is not the reason. The increase in water or decrease in water is not the reason for assay change. How? Let us understand with the help of example. So here is the example on your screen and I have considered uh, two stability intervals to explain how this increase or decrease in water content doesn't impact onto the drug product assay. The first one is T0 that is initial time point and the second one is six month stability time point. So what is the details now? The label claim of the product is uh, 500 mg. The weight of 20 tablets at T0 means at initial time point is 20 gram. 
and weight of uh, 20 tablets at uh, 6 months is 21 gram. So I will just uh, increase the figure to make you clear that this 1 gram increase in the weight of 20 tablets is because of the increase in the water content. So this is the example where the water has got increased. What is the average weight now at T0? Just 20 gram divided by number of tablets is going to become 1 gram. And for 6 months it is 21 divided by 20 is going to become 1.05 gram. And let us assume that you have a sample preparation according to the crushing technique now. So you are going to take a 20 tablets, crush, it, uh, crush them into a fine powder and then measure the sample equivalent to 200 mg of an API. So how much uh, sample has to be taken now to make sure that that crushed powder contain 200 mg of the API. So it will become 0.4 gram in case of T0, isn't it? And it will become 0.42 gram. I am sorry that the gram unit is missing there. But it is going to become 0.42 gram in case of the 6 month. Right? So that 0.42 gram will have again 200 mg of the API. So this important factor I need to calculate. Average weight divided by sample weight into label claim. Why? I will explain very soon. So what is average weight in case of T0? It is 1 gram divided by sample weight is 0.4 gram divided by label claim which is 0.500 uh, gram because 500 mg is going to become 0.5 gram. So the, this factor comes to be 5 in case of T0. If I calculate the same factor in case of 6 months, now, what is the average weight in case of 6 month? 1.05. What is the sample weight? 0.42. What is the label claim? 0.5 gram. Again, the factor is 5. Is there a change in the, the factor now? Average weight divided by sample weight into label claim in case of T0 and 6 month? Absolutely no. So, even though there is an increase in water content at 6 month, our factor has not got changed. And let us look at this particular calculation formula now. So, in case of your crushing technique, you know, your calculation formula contains this factor, average weight divided by sample weight divided by label claim. So, if this factor is not going to get changed, even though there is an increase in water content or even there is a decrease in water content, the one thing we can clarify that the change in the water content is not going to affect our drug product as well. The first important point. And in case if you are adopting the dropping method, now there is no mention of sample weight, isn't it? And the label claim which is part of the calculation formula is certainly not going to get changed. And hence in case of a dropping method, the change in water content is certainly not going to have any impact. I hope you are clear with this important information. Let us now try to understand what are the probable reasons for the increase in assay of a drug product, OST specifically, during the stability. The first important point is, now these are all probable reasons, interference of a placebo degradants with an API during the stability study. So in case if your excipients itself generating the degradation products, because the excipients are not compatible with maybe API or may not be compatible with the another excipients and those degradants, I call them as a placebo degradants, now they are actually interfering with the API quantitation and obviously you are going to get the higher assay values. Now how this will be incremental because the placebo degradants will also get increased over a period of time during the stability study and that will result into the incremental increase in the assay value. The second important point is interference of API degradants with higher response than API. I mean your method is not a stability indicating method and there are certain degradants which are having the higher response than your principal peak or API. And they are also interfering in case of HPLC you can think about they are co eluting with the APIs. Now, as these impurities are having higher response than the API, you will end up getting the higher response for API plus that degradant and then you will say, okay, now I have the higher API content that will result into the higher percent assay. Interference of leachables 
there could be possibility that the leachables are getting observed during the stability study and unfortunately they are also interfering with the quantitation of API and hence you can expect a higher response or higher percent assay. Change in polymorph during stability is also another reason for the change in the assay or increase in the assay or can be decrease in the assay, both the ways possible. But how this polymorph can result into the different response? I have a small example for you. So you can see that the change in the polymorph can also bring the change into the UV spectra and hence the change in the UV response. So in case if the UV response at the wavelength of your detection has got increased because of the change in the polymorph, you can expect that the response will get increased over a period during the stability study and you will quantify higher assay content. So the change in polymorph can also result into the incremental incre increase in the assay because the polymorph change is also incremental in the nature, isn't it? And that's the result in the incremental assay value. The next important reason could be the change in the pH of the formulation. I mean, this could be a quite uh, uh, thin possibility, but could be a possibility that initially your pH is, let us say, maybe 4.5 and, and slowly your pH is, pH of the tablet or capsule is now increasing, maybe 4.5 to 4.6, 4.7 and 5.0, something like that. Now the concern over here is now, the pH also impacts your uh, uh, spectral characteristics, especially the UV spectra. You can see the different in UV absorbance at the different pHs. And here is the example onto the screen, how the pH of this particular substance has got changed from pH 2 to pH 7. You can see that the drop in, you know, the response. So now this uh, pH impact will not be on your uh, standard because standard doesn't contain the sample uh, matrix, isn't it? But this can certainly impact onto your sample solutions and that can result into the different uh, response. And if the response is found to be on higher side, you can certainly end up getting the more response and more percent assay. So this could be the reason. And again, uh, the last reason is conversion of impurity into an API over a period of stability. A very thin possibility, but you cannot neglect that possibility for increase in assay over a period of stability time point. So I think this could be the probable reasons for you know, the increased assay of a oral solid dosage forms during the stability. And some of these reasons could be applicable for another dosage forms as well. Thank you so much. But uh, in case if you have some another uh, probable reasons for incremental assay values, please uh, let me know in the comment box below. Bye-bye.